Okay, well, tonight's movie is The Hurricane with Denzel Washington. How many in here have seen The Hurricane? Okay, <laughs> just JP. You're all in for a major treat tonight. And what stirred me to show The Hurricane tonight is it's such a good miracle movie. Uh, is that uh, before I took off with Deanna to go to Dallas, um, actually just as I was getting ready to go with Deanna to Dallas, I got an email from a man named Robbie Grayson, who's a publisher. And he wrote to me and he said, Dear Mr. Hoffmeister, I'm publisher for the book The Bully Within, A Journey of Consciousness by Dale Crow. Dale wanted me to contact you about how your work is his, quote, new favorite. I've attached a review below that surveys Dale's book, a story about a former athlete who found enlightenment in prison and is obsessed with teaching others the message of love. With gratefulness for the work you do, Robbie Grayson. And here's the, the cover of The Bully Within. Kind of got the splattered blood, and there's your boxer, that's him. And then that's the back of him, the shadow with the kind of the splattered blood, and the bully is in red, within A Journey of Consciousness, Dale Crow, mm -hmm. with David Garcia. So, so apparently he's in prison, and his publisher uh, sent me his book with a beautiful little note attached saying he's, he's getting into our stuff in prison, which really relates to the movie tonight because Denzel and this whole uh, movie, this is based on a true story. The movie tonight is based on a true story and it's quite inspiring. So um, he went on, it goes on to talk about a journey of consciousness. And it's kind of interesting how it starts off. A journey of consciousness. Imagine, this is the promo for the, the Bully Within. Imagine answering someone who inquired the whereabouts of Dale Crow with, there never was a Dale Crow. Now imagining responding that way if you were Dale Crow. <laughs> to most ears that sentence would sound like a nonsense statement or an evasive maneuver. For Dale Crow it is neither. Dale means, quote, valley in Hebrew. That's fitting because I felt squeezed between two mountains for most of my life. After going to war with that duality for almost 40 years, I've learned that there never really was a Dale Crow. Saying that there's no real Dale Crow sounds like a riddle, but it's actually a truth that means a lot to me. And then, um, it's an autobiographical biographical play-by-play -play transformation of former up-and-coming cruiserweight boxer Dale Crow, the transformation from bully into an enlightened man. A bully within, the Bully Within is a book about spirituality, not boxing. In it, Dale seeks to answer his own riddle. From the first page of the prologue, he paints a detailed brush, strokes the deceptively benign beginnings of his volatile past. He talks about being born in Ohio. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> the body of David was born, trying to impress his uh, his father, getting into boxing, and uh, and then having some losses that opened up a, a chasm of loneliness, which was uh, what spurred him on to seek larger doses of ego-driven attention from an early age. And then he obviously was driven into his inward journey. But it's cute because it's got mom and dad and little Dale. This is up from the publisher's promo that they sent to me. And then if we go down a little bit, as those were, oh, those are actually his maternal grandparents. And then you go down, um, you get to see. Uh, there's four of them there, and he's the second one. This is him growing up with his four, four buddies. I'm just zooming in so you can see him as a teenager. And then 
Here he is on an ESPN fight with Michael Moore. He's on the right, and Michael Moore huh. is on the left. So here's his <laughs> professional boxing career on on ESPN. You'll see how this relates to the movie tonight, too. <laughs> the Hurricane. Hurricane is a nickname for Hurricane Carter. Mm -hmm. Some of you know that wind in the Bible, the wind is often representing the Holy Spirit. And the hurricane is a huge <laughs> gale force of wind, which he needs in this movie, because he's going to be unfairly accused, seemingly, as the world would judge it. And he's got to have all the wind in, in his heart carrying through. And then here's one of him a little bit later on. There's our buddy Dale. I'll give you the little rundown here. And here's Dale today. You can see his uh, smiling face. His his tattoos, he's got his watch on, hand in the pocket. Oh. But I think, as far as I know, I think he's still, he's still in prison. And he got a couple of my books, Unwind Your Mind, mm -hmm. Back to God, okay. and finished. Quantum Forgiveness. Wait, what's his name? So, Dale. Oh, I think I sent him those books. Or <laughs> yeah, you, you. <laughs> Well, where's Tamara? Tamara. She helped me. She yeah. helped. Yeah, you guys. Right. His wife, Holly. Okay. Oh my God. This is so bad. you sent him. You sent him the book, and he read them. I think he read them in prison, uh, because uh, that was that was how he got in touch with with what we're doing. So anyway, I, I sent a reply, and. Um, Basically, um, I wrote, Dear Robbie, thanks so much for sharing this heartwarming book and story. I've shared it with some of my very dear friends. Please give my love and congratulations to Dale. I would love hearing from him. And if you feel to give him my email address, and then when I typed that, the Holy Spirit said, Oh, you have to give him your postal address because he's, he's still in prison and he can't get email out. Or put postal mailing address, and I put P.O. Box 789, Camas, Utah, 84036. So, mm -hmm. we're recording this. Any of you around the world want to <laughs> send me your stories? I take a little PR moment here. Once again, that's P.O. Box 789, Camas, Utah, 84036. And, and you, hear, you hear Tamara, and you hear... Uh, th we, these are the ones that send you, Nicholas, send you the stuff. It's my pleasure. So anyway, ra anyway, Robbie writes back to me right before I'm, I'm I think I'm right before I'm going to the airport. Where I'm in the in the vehicle and I'm like, what's this? David Hoffmeister, thank you for your prompt reply, exclamation. I forwarded your email to Dale, Dale's wife, Holly, who received it right before Dale called. He was elated, exclamation. Holly told me that she had just ordered him the following books. Purpose is the only choice. Going deeper. The mystical teachings of Jesus. The peace of God is my one goal, the Barley's book. He has read the following. Choosing inner peace, unwind your mind back to God, quantum forgiveness. I just got off the phone with him and he wanted me to let you know that he loved quantum forgiveness, exclamation. I'm sure that you will hear from him via snail mail. <laughs> Thank you for all that you do, exclamation. So, the parallels are quite amazing because uh, Dale was a boxer and Hur Hurricane Carter was a boxer and I think Dale's still in prison and um, some of you might have seen, we've had some great classic prison movies like Shawshank Redemption was another one, which was quite amazing. Uh, and this one, um, Hurricane Carter is, is accused and sends to prison 
for something he he did not do. So it, I, I don't know the circumstances around why Dale's in there, but but both Hurricane and Dale use their prison time very wisely. I've always thought it's almost like you're a captive audience with the Holy Spirit uh, because you have all that time on your hands and I've heard amazing stories of uh, prison ministries down in Mexico City uh, for many many years where the, the course of miracles got into the prison system down there. There was a woman who took it in and, I, and this man who was a professor named Guzman who who uh, translated the entire course into Spanish. Um, it wasn't the official translation, that was uh, Rosa Maria Wynn over in um, Spain. But he spent his whole life, this man, Professor Guzman, uh, translating this and then gave it uh, to this woman who took it into the Mexican prison system in, down in uh, one of the largest cities in the world, Mexico City. And there were people getting out on on parole, there were there were so many miracles that happened from the course being there in Spanish in the prison system, and and I think I had some communications with um, maybe initially with Guzman, who who sent his Spanish book all the way up uh, to my little peace house, and it arrived in in a, in a big box, and uh, it was kind of funny because at that time I was in there and I was just praying. Uh, what would be helpful, and we we watched um, the good the story of the Gutenberg Bible and uh, and uh, how a, I believe it was a German monk had had translated the Bible, which was only in Latin at that time, uh, into German so that common people could read the Bible. And the very night we were watching the movie, we heard a knock on the door. And it was a late delivery in that Guzman version. So Jesus was making it very clear, like, uh, this is how I work. I want this into the common people's hands. And Guzman had done that. He had devoted his whole life to translating the Course and done it. And in this movie, uh, it's really a good movie because because he has to have an enormous uh, faith and determination to go beyond the grievances and go beyond actually the belief in mistreatment. I think that's, you know, that's something that most people on this planet deal with on a daily basis. The victim mentality is so rooted and so deep. It can be minor things. Maybe it's not somebody accusing you of a crime or throwing you in prison, but every day there the ego will rise up with its victim mentality, trying to say that you've been mistreated by someone or something, or even, it could be even a mosquito bite, it could be anything that's a version of it. And I think what I liked about the crucifixion was Jesus was using, in the Holy Spirit they were using an extreme teaching example, which seemingly this movie is also an extreme teaching example that it's impossible to be unfairly treated. And Jesus says that in the Course, beware of the temptation to perceive yourself unfairly treated, because you're looking for a justice that's not there. It's a justice in which uh, someone is innocent at the expense of somebody else. And he has a whole section in the Course called The Justice of Heaven, saying there is no justice in this world. Don't go trying to find justice. Don't go trying to find fairness in on the linear timeline because it, the timeline was made to, to, that you would never know the justice of heaven. Which is very much as you so show, so show you reap and, and everything that you give, you give to yourself and it's impossible for a divine mind to be unfairly treated because there is nothing outside of that divine mind to mistreat it, so it's actually impossible to be unfairly treated. But these kind of movies, the crucifixion, those are great extreme teaching devices. And and apparently, even with Dale, I think that's what whatever it was, all the seeming perceptions of of trying to get attention from the world, trying to succeed in the world, trying to get attention from his from his father, and then um, I think those were his, 
his grandparents that were in that one photo that I showed you, but and then using boxing as a way to try to gain self-esteem. And that's a common thing when, when you feel like uh, you've been bullied or you, you feel unworthy, then there's a huge attempt by the ego to overcompensate for that unworthiness. And it can be a huge drive to succeed or a huge drive to uh, overcome failure or even a huge drive at revenge. A lot of times people feel like they've been done wrong by something or someone and they are out to make up for it. And it can involve whole races of people and whole cultural groups uh, because we have always things going on in this world where there's always seemingly the bodies that were on some land first are called the natives and then the ones that come are the invaders and of course as I've had traveled around to 40 some countries I get to people eventually tell me their stories of who was who was first and who took what and whether it's in New Zealand with the, the Maori or when I went to South America I went to Colombia you know I was having a good time and then huge protest uh, broke out in the streets and there's people protesting all over the place thousands tens of thousands of people and I said what's what's going on and well they're protesting the, the Spanish <laughs> I thought well this is a this is a Spanish country, right? They speak Spanish down here in Colombia, and they're like, no, the natives <laughs> before the Spanish invaded and came, and you know, and they were protesting the Spanish. I thought, no, gosh, it's like that sounds like America. We we get protests going on over everything. Who's who's done what to whom? Who was there first? And you know, everywhere I go, it's it's the. And I, they have na now they got you go to Canada. They got Native Indians up there, and I'm like, oh, you got Native Canadians, and you go around, and everywhere you go, there's it's the same, it's the same old story. Everywhere I go, I get slandered, libeled. I hear words I never heard in the Bible, and I'm so tired. I'm oh, 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 so tired, and I'm trying to keep the customers satisfied, satisfied. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, uh, that's Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, but <laughs> that's channeling Simon and Garfunkel. It just was the perfect song. Jesus always has so much fun with these things because it's there's always the perfect song for the moment. So, but that's what was is good about this movie. So, you know, it's it's good. It's it's the kind of mind watcher which is good. You watch one of these things, and if you have any kind of inkling of starting to, you know, it starts to bring up that feeling of being mistreated or uh, overlooked or you know treated in any way shape or form unfairly then that's good it's it serves its purpose and then it's um, yeah it's it's heartwarming that you'll get you'll get to hear the a very 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 famous movie line in here you'll know what it is when it comes out it's extremely famous you'll always remember this until you ascend, then you'll forget it. You'll always remember this until you ascend, then you'll go, what was that? Oh, it doesn't matter. But it's, it's really good. You'll know. You'll know it when it comes on there. I think it's, yeah, I think it's Denzel gets to deliver it, so. Okay, that's it. This is, we'll just let it play straight through to the end, and yeah, it's beautiful. It'll be a great two and a half hour meditation. It's two and a half hours long. I think it is, yeah. So so I'm just telling you, you know, if you if you start if anyone starts snoring, we'll just have a Nicholas come and take carry them out. Uh, for 
or or we'll just let them snore. You have to practice with the snoring. If they if they lose it, some you know they can't make it two and a half hours. So. You're gonna be truly hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> was Kelly Kelly set up if she knocks? Yeah, yeah. I told her to to uh, text me. Okay. And, She'll text. So maybe yeah. we could even pause the movie and just welcome her, <laughs> and because uh, she's coming maybe around. She told me because uh, I just texted before this. Um, she thought she'd arrive like at eight. Eight. Okay. Right at eight. That's yeah. good. That's not that far. Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay. Well, the famous line. Hate put me in the prison, love's going to bust me out. You know, you see how that applies to the whole human condition? That's, that's the answer to everything. It seemed like it was a movie about a boxer, and, but it's not. It's not really a movie about a boxer at all. Yeah, I just had the thought that it's like every story is a potential for a love story. Everything is just waiting for that. Yeah. And love to shine through. To love to bust, yeah. bust it loose. Mm-hmm. Bust it loose from all the stories. And it's something to consider. You know, we have a, a group, a, a worldwide community call, but, you know, we always talk a lot about dedication and devotion, and you could see. He had to keep the faith, he had to keep trusting mm-hmm. in the face of all the doubts. He was even going mm-hmm. through that, the Bible, you know, when he was in the hole, yea, though I walk mm-hmm. through the valley of the shadow of death, <coughs> shadow of death, mm-hmm. doubt, doubt. It was kept coming at him, coming at him, and, and wanting to kill somebody, and he said, there's only one fellow in here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he could see that that was it, but it, it's something to recall when you think about the the dedication and the purpose of your life. You know that the, it's all just for that moment mm-hmm. of love busting mm-hmm. you out. That's what everything is for. Every single seeming action, every single seeming second. Every single seeming thought has to all be aimed at that one thing. Let thy mind be single. You know, it's only a unified purpose that brings the freedom. So it's quite amazing to think that that's what everything is really about. Mm-hmm. Nothing is what it seems on the surface of things, but everything's about keeping that faith. And then Lazarus even said, well, if love doesn't bust you out, <laughs> it's still the temptation to think there's going to be some personal busting going on, but there isn't. <laughs> there isn't any personal busting that is going to save the day. <laughs> it just has to be like a surrender of <laughs> Letting go of everything, yeah. absolutely everything. And just answering the call, I, I think that was a beautiful turning point when, you know, he says, I can't do the time anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He reached out and said, I Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was it. Mm-hmm. And that's really when you look at the human condition, that's the, that's got to be the, the key that opens everything, that unlocks the door in the mind, mm-hmm. is I can't do the time anymore, you know. Yeah. Or like that Carly Simon song, Haven't Got Time for the Pain, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was beautiful, because he, he just was totally authentic, he just cracked open and, you know, they, they responded with the love. Which was really beautiful too, when you really go beyond the words, but, you know, we're here for you, and we're not leaving without you. You know, we all go together, which is really what 
the workbook of A Course in Miracles is saying, you know, that when you accept the gift of healing, legions upon legions will arise with you as you accept the gift of healing. Diana and I were just in Dallas, Texas, and when we were there, that that uh, church, and we waited till the last day, and it was coming down to the last session on the last day, and then one of our hosts, she came up and during the break, and she said, I, I have questions here. She had very serious, her major questions about the Course. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? What's it talking about? Which is good, because, you know, that's, that's what we want. We want somebody to come with all their doubts and, and face it and, and ask all their questions. And, yeah, it was beautiful that she was able to to do that because she just, she could accept certain things, but certain things just didn't, didn't fit for her, but yeah, it was beautiful, it was such a call for love, and I think it just, yeah, we had a bursting final session there, because the call was sincere, yeah what it always comes down to. It's, yep. God hears the prayer of the heart and answers. Yeah. You come to that. But her question was the, I always call it the number one question, how could this happen? <laughs> Getting down so we explored it all very carefully, very deeply. How could this happen in the first place? And, and then another one asked the question about what happens when you die? I thought, oh great, bring it on in big D. <laughs> let's, let's go deeper than the questions and yeah, go into an experience. And, it's beautiful. Can't die. Can't be in prison. <coughs> and it's great when you get to that point in your mind where you say, like he did, like Hurricane said, like, I can't do the time. Oh, mm -hmm. glory, hallelujah. <laughs> can't do the time anymore. <laughs> it took that. It took that. Mm. But I told you at the end, there's no words. <laughs> no words for that. I'm just so overjoyed to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm. Oh, we knew you were coming. We were so glad. I'm just bursting over here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, we had a feeling you would burst, so that's how we, we, we waved the green light and waved you on in. Bring her on in. You'll never refuse a burst. <laughs> yeah. 
and powerful for me. The, there's that, like I took it as an all or nothing scene where mm-hmm. basically they're saying like, if he refuses this, it's like, it's all gone, you've lost like everything, mm-hmm. there's no chance of you getting now. And it was like, that I can't stay here anymore, it's like, I, mm-hmm. I can't be a plan B. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's been coming to my mind lately, just the fact like, if you have a plan B that, I don't know, like, you can't have a plan A then, <laughs> because you can't commit fully. If there's any plan B, it divides your mind. You, know? like you can't have the full experience of it. And just oh, that scene was so powerful. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like you know, in some sense, it's like risking everything. <laughs> and, like, yeah, total surrender. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It was pretty obvious, you know, because from the legal perspective, it's like they, it's like this big risky thing, but. But going back to the state of New Jersey, I mean, is that really an option? It, he but, said he couldn't do the time. He wasn't yeah, there. he couldn't do the time. And, he, and, and the state of New Jersey, in this sense, New Jersey is the best. There's no doubt. <laughs> From the movie, you could just see it clearly acted out. Everything about was the past. So, yeah, do you choose to move forward? Yes, we choose. <laughs> And beautiful to have a, a lawyer representing you that had, that was the last doubt thought. He was, he was <laughs> doubting from the beginning and his, his partner, his collaborator wouldn't agree with him. Mm-hmm. And that was his last doubt thought. And I could see the thoughts getting reflected, like at one point when um, they come to visit him and, and they're all fired up, you know, we're moving here, we're not leaving without you, and they're all fired up. and. He said, that's going to stir up, it's going to bring enemies that you've never met, it's going to... And then, you know, when, when the warden called him in and, and literally laid out like the threat, that was just a reflection. The warden was just reflecting his own <coughs> concern for their well-being. You could still hear it when they were so excited and he could feel it coming up and he said, I can't protect you in here. <laughs> it was still that protectionism mm-hmm. coming up, which is still doubt. Whenever you feel somebody has to be protected, then mm-hmm. it's really just a fear of the truth, the fear of the love. And But yeah, what a fantastic movie. I mean, it's all there. It's. Uh, that's why it's in our movie, Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment. It's, a t- it's just a classic. A classic of having to persevere and break out from the, the prison of the mind. Very much like Shawshank Redemption. Uh, it was funny the other day, I was happened to click on a movie site and the Academy of Motion Pictures had rated the top 100 movies of all time. Uh-huh. And the top of the list was Shawshank mm-hmm. Redemption. That's the Academy of Motion Pictures. You know, that's all the people that vote every year for the best pictures. And, you know, it's funny because that's another reason why I, I, this one came to mind. Not only our friend uh, with his book of Dale, but then, yeah, on the... On the uh, on the airplane, I think when Francis and I were flying in uh, from Australia, when we were making that last flight, I didn't watch, it was like 13 and a half hours, I didn't watch a single movie. Uh, I just, she said, you had your earbuds in the entire 13 and a half hours. She said, doesn't that hurt your ears? And I said, no, it's, I had no interest in watching a movie, but I did peer, I was in coach and I did peer into first class to see what's going on up there in first class and it was Shawshank <laughs> Redemption. Uh, so I did see <laughs> off in the distance and I thought, hmm, okay, we'll pay attention. Yeah, we'll pay attention to that. So yeah, it started to, then when Dale wrote in and, and his his uh, Robbie, his publisher, 
that started to stir, <coughs> like, uh, spirits pointing us at something here. What is it? And it's like, oh, it's the hurricane. <laughs> Perfect. I haven't seen Shashi Production. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas is like, oh, he's loving it. Oh. This journey, new movies. <laughs> Another new movie. I remember putting it on my desktop and I just, uh, it's not time yet. It's been like over like two years now or something. I was like, it doesn't feel like it's time. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's amazing because when Suzanne and I were at the monastery the other day, we just kind of took a pause and she asked me to, just to open up the book and see what Spirit had for us. And actually, the part I opened up to was called The Fear of Redemption. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was like really pow I only read, I think it was the first paragraph, mm -hmm. but it was so, like, just, I found mm -hmm. a meditation or something. Mm -hmm. It was very powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have forgotten about this. Like, yeah, it's all orchestrated. <laughs> Tonight was the hurricane, tomorrow we've got our our community call, but and Kelly coming, I feel that the ingredients are just right. The ingredients it's like the ingredients are coming. Yeah, Ricky comes just to, hmm? Ricky. Ricky, Ricky comes, comes tonight, and a little pinch of this, and a pinch of that. We keep stirring. <laughs> Kelly comes. And Eric might do a concert tomorrow. Eric, <laughs> he's staring at him. Oh, that's so cool. And what is it? today? This is just the sixth of December, so this is we're Saint coming. Nicholas Day. Yeah, right? we're coming in. We're coming in. This is Saint Nicholas Day. We're coming into the holidays, and spirits just put a little pinch of this in, stir. Oh, it's good. Wow. Get your spoons out. <laughs> taste before it's baked. Just take a little taste of it. That was always the best part. Yeah, you know, I was always waiting for my cookie dough. Back before we had chocolate cookie dough ice cream, we would have chocolate chip cookie dough just to eat it, right? <laughs> no need for baking. No. <laughs> Somehow mom knew that too, like, it was too important to, to, to whisk it all up and throw it in the oven. <laughs> Let the spoons enter. <laughs> <laughs> have allowance, <laughs> have trust. <laughs> Let the spoons enter. <laughs> it's very joyful. <laughs> it is, it's right. Yeah. You want to lick the spoon? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we more than lick the spoon. We got the spoons in the batter. Yeah. We did not hold back. My mom would make batter just so we could eat it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was more like don't resist. Like if it's if it's there's something to bake, fine. And if there's not, that's good too. Just let it go. Let go of the script. Australian partner. Michael. Michael. Good night. Good night. Love you. Love you. Love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just felt the spike in feelings in this movie were powerful because mm -hmm. even when those death thoughts came up, I felt like it just like just blew right through. Like they were even the guy confronting them, like, get the hell out of here, and you're not well. He just kept going. Yeah. And the wheel fell off. The wheel. And then the wheel fell off. Okay, the wheel fell off. Okay. They just, they, it's like nothing stopped them, and, and it's like neither matter of the reflections. I just, it was so powerful. Like, there was no hesitation I felt with them. It's like, that's yeah. so key, like, not buying yeah. into the doubt. Oh, yeah, they all, they all witnessed the faith in the end. None of them. Turn back. Yeah. So beautiful.
Yeah, and it's such a walk of trust to do whatever it takes and and not succumb to the doubt thoughts, mm -hmm. the naysayers, the I remember we had a satsang in this room the just the, the night before tripod passed. And it was so deep, the love was so deep, so thick. My mouth could just it wouldn't wouldn't move anymore. It just the love was so strong and everything. And afterwards people were saying, Oh, I never heard you so quiet. Mm -hmm. But it was just so much love and and that's all that there is, you know. And then Monty shows up under Sarah's trailer and the beat goes on. <laughs> Tripod, Monty, female, male, four legs, three legs. What does it matter? It's all the same. It's all the same. Just love. So beautiful. So much love. So we'll stay open to prayer, but probably more movies coming our way. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Get the popcorn ready. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see what happens next with Dale. Oh, yeah. The story's unfolding.